Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. It is Wednesday afternoon. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO of Go Local. With me is Rob McClanahan, shooting coach to the stars, <laughs> right? Like how good a title is that? Uh, did you think of that when you were like nine years old playing uh, uh, CYO in uh, Cranston? No, or did you, I, did I was, you play CLCF? I did play CLCF <laughs> and I was too busy working on my own shot. Uh, <laughs> so I wasn't preparing to do this, but yeah, it's uh, something that's been a it's been a long journey, a fun journey, and it started, yeah, we're in Cranston and uh, went on to Henrikin and you know something I thought I'd never do because it didn't exist, you know. Yeah, it's been fun. So you go from growing up in Cranston to Henrikin, win a couple state championships or so. Yeah, one. Uh, uh, walk on at Syracuse. Yeah. Um, they even take you on trips when they, you know, they all, did, all, yeah, all over trip. the place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bayheim even let you play against Seton Hall. You didn't, you, you didn't did, break yes. anything. <laughs> um, and then you, you finish up and uh, this interesting journey you take working with a lot of the top kind of inner working uh, professionals within the NBA. And it leads you to this kind of amazing position of yeah. being the guy who helps develop and fix the, the 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 best players in the NBA. Yeah, I mean, playing at Syracuse definitely helped. I learned a lot from Coach Beheim, Mike Hopkins, who's now the head coach of Washington, was a big play development guy, taught me a lot. First guy to really teach me a lot about that. Um, and then I went out to IMG Academy. I coached at South Florida with Seth Greenberg for a year. And the IMG stuff was good because it was the first time I saw, well, you can make a living doing this. Yeah, um, right. You know, so, so when I, after I did that, I, you know, taught a Hendrickin, coach a Hendrickin, and I got Ryan Gomes, local guy, Ruben Garces, one of my two first pro guys. Yeah. Uh, so it was kind of cool. They kept me out when they went pro. And then uh, moving forward, I met Kevin Love and Derek Rose at a big high school camp uh, called ABCD Camp run by Sonny Vaccaro. And they kept me on, too, and uh, Kevin brought in his roommate, this guy named Russell Westbrook. Um, <laughs> Wait, so. you, made, you made the mention. And he's kind of an interesting story. His freshman year at UCLA, he plays eight minutes. Something like, yeah. Like the next year, something. he goes in the NBA draft. Yeah, he goes to the Final Four. <laughs> and the funny thing about it is the Final Four matchup that year was UCLA, Westbrook at K-Love versus Derrick Rose. Yeah. So my three guys went at it in the Final Four, and then they all went to a uh, 2008 draft class. And they went pick four, no, I'm sorry, one, four, five. Yeah. Uh, Derek, Russell, Kevin, and that order. And, uh, and are you sitting there that night of the NBA draft going like... <laughs> yeah, I was at the draft. It literally cannot get better than this. Yeah, I got really lucky. And, and honestly, I had eight of the top 15 picks in that draft. Wow. Uh, the most, I think, yeah, for sure I've ever had. <laughs> uh, you know, so you know, that was a, 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 my first draft that I've ever went to. So to be there, part of it... And, and, you know, hanging with these guys after was a really cool moment. And from there on in, it kind of, my career kind of really took off. You, you've written a book called Network. It's kind of a double entendre, maybe a triple entendre. Yeah. Talk, talk about the title, uh, because it is a different uh, way of thinking about networks and networks. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, am I a decent trainer? Yeah, maybe I'm an okay trainer. But really, I got that through my networking. Yeah. Uh, and, and by that, I mean... Coach Beheim, agents, assistant coaches, you know, players, uh, high school coaches that really helped me and trusted me with their players. And I'm relentlessly going after that and built relationships with those players, the agents. Right. So therefore, now I'm trusted by them. So it's not your typical training book. It definitely talks about training, but it's really about the behind the scenes look at why these guys, you know, are great. Um, let's talk a little bit about your compensation. Do they pay you on the hour? Because I, I did a little work. Yeah. Uh, and Forbes ranks the top uh, highest paid compensated NBA players. You have two, three, and four. Curry, oh, Durant, and Westbrook. Combined, they, last year they made about $200 million. You're not getting paid hourly, I hope. I hope you're getting a flat percentage <laughs> of their overall gross. I'm thinking you want to ask them for 10% going forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That's a good call. I should probably change my contracts. <laughs> yeah, everyone does a different deal. Some guys have me on retainer. I see them all year long. Other guys go you know, by trip, by week. Um, and it's funny, though, when I first started doing this, I didn't really have anyone to go to to yeah. ask because right, no right. one did it. So you it wasn't like, oh, what you charge? So right. I would just, you know, come up with a fair number and, uh, yeah, that sounds good to us. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you play a, a number of roles. One, kind of keeping them fit and, and developing their game, adding things in the off season, et cetera. You're also the fixer during the season. Yeah. From a technical standpoint, yeah. you know their shots. 
You know when their feet aren't set. You can see it in one second. Yeah. And then third, it's the mental aspect of the game of getting their confidence back and their head back in the game. Walk us through really how you approach those things. And when is it, hey, your shot's broken, or when is it when your head's broken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a long season. So yeah. you know, they, they play 82 games, and you go to the finals, you're playing about 100 games. That's a lot of games. Right. Um, so you're going to have you're gonna have bad games. You're going to have good games. And I think if you stay steady, like, you know, Steph Curry and those guys and Durant, you know, if they miss a shot, they miss 10 shots, they don't care. They're going to yeah. take the next shot. And, right. and that's because they're so prepared, and, and they think they deserve to take that shot, right? Um, but the mentality, you know, to me, is a big thing is the confidence that these guys have. And they have confidence because they work at it. Right. Uh, and I always compare it to, you know, having a test on a Friday. If you study all week, you go into that classroom in high school, I got this. If you study in the bus ride, you know, to school on Friday morning, you walk in there like, oh, God, I'm not going to do well. You know, so yeah. these guys work so hard. Once they get to the, uh, the game, you know, they're prepared. Um, did you make more money on the advance of the book or Brian Scalabrini paying you to be in the book? How did Brian Scalabrini, I saw him when he was at USC. Yeah. I think it was the first game ever played at the Ryan Center. Uh, oh, wow. against URI, USC came in, and uh, saw him as a Celtic. How is he even in your book uh, as a as a shooting I mean, Scal is a dear friend of mine. Uh, and but, it's, it's, is this pity? Is it charity? <laughs> Can you declare it on your taxes? Is it a write-off? Those pages of Scalabrini get written off? They, 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 yeah, they, they, they probably will. Uh, <laughs> but not, that's my guy. You know, and He's actually helped me a lot. And, and the, the back story to that is my first met Scalabrini. Uh, it was before Game 7 of the NBA Finals in L.A. And Kenny Perkins had just torn his ACL. So now Scal's like, oh, my God, I might play in Game 7 of the Finals. <laughs> so I didn't really know him, but uh, I worked for his agent. And they said, can you train me today? It was the day before the Finals. I need to prepare. So, like, so he needs to be trained to be a good basketball player before <laughs> the, the seventh before game of the NBA Finals. <laughs> he just wanted to you know. Again, I think it's just like, you know, a confidence thing. Yeah. So we worked out, and it's a funny story. Scal tells us to everybody. We worked out. I knew the guy now for an hour. <laughs> and we're sitting down. I said, hey, Scal, um, any chance you got a ticket to tomorrow night's game? <laughs> and he looks at me. He says, I just met you. You worked me out for one hour. <laughs> and you want to take it to game seven, Lakers-Celtics NBA Finals. Like, I don't have anyone else asking me that. Uh, and he tells a story to everybody. Because it was a kind of ballsy move for me to, to ask. Did he get you a ticket? No, actually, Rick Buecher was there from ESPN. And he ended up surprising me with one ticket. No, Scal did not give me a ticket. <laughs> you should not have put him in the book. Um, you know, this is a broader book. It's, it's, it's everybody from the high school basketball player mm -hmm up to the lessons you present in corporate speaking environments. Talk about, uh, let's go to the, the CEO. What's the, what's the lesson for the CEO or that vice president of sales? What, what do they take away from this book? Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of corporate speaking based on this book this past year. And the three pillars that I talk about are uh, networking, yeah. relationships, and be professional. And to me, they're all intertwined. I've been talking to financial groups, insurance groups, real estate, and it's very parallel, right? So you got to network to create that relationship. So first you network, you get maybe a client or someone that could recommend you a client. Right. Then you have a relationship. And one thing I'm proud of is not that I train these guys. You know, it's been keeping them. You know, when you get right. Kevin Love and Westbrook and Durant early on in their career and then they skyrocket, you have all the trainers saying, oh, you know what, Rob's good, but, you know, try my stuff. Yeah, you know? right. And the same thing with financial advisors. You know, you do well with a guy and then... Guys, new tricks to make my money and try to pull them along. So, to maintain that relationship for me has been most thing I'm proud of and professional. And by that, I mean getting back to people right away, yeah. returning emails, answering a call, uh, being accountable, being on time. And that's a big thing that I've, I've learned from some of these guys too. Like Russell's early to every single So, to fight off those competitors who are trying to sort of uh, yeah. you know, take off, have you added kale into your. Uh, yeah, I've added kale salad like because of Kevin Love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I try to get one of those a day in <laughs> for sure. Um, you know these guys. I mean, Kevin Love, I think, changed the entire d dynamics of professional sports when he came forward very publicly and outlined, mm -hmm. you know, the the mental uh, issues that he had to overcome yep. to be able to play in 100 games every year. And it was, I think, a breakthrough moment mm -hmm. for, for folks who are, have family members or suffer with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And it was very empowering for other people. What was that dynamic as he was ready to come come forward? Yeah, I, I had no idea. 
um, yeah. honestly. And the, that was the point of the article as well. The people closest to him really didn't know, yeah. and he hit it. And he looked at it like, I'm Kevin Love, I'm a world champion, I'm an right. Olympian, I'm a gold medalist. You know, no way I can be. Right. You know, have anxiety or depression. Um, and he went through this episode, hit a game, had crazy anxiety, and he describes it in the article in the Players' Tribune. And he, and he decided he wanted to come out because he was sick of hiding it. And, and, and he wanted to get rid of that stigma just because you have money and you're a star and you do whatever you want and you have cars right. and all that. It doesn't matter. They're just like us. They go home and they might get lonely, depressed, have anxiety, whatever it is. So after he came out, you know, Michael Phelps came out and said he was majorly yep. depressed. I think Carson Daly with him. A lot of guys. So I'm really proud of Kevin. I don't think he knew where this was going to go. And it's crazy. You know, he's speaking at Harvard and all these places now. And, and he's really trying to get rid it's of It's an stigma. ultimate leadership moment in professional really sports. Yeah. Um, let's talk about um, your 12 rules, rule two, beef. I was really expecting that to be about you need to consume a lot of steak. And it was, <laughs> it was disappointingly, yeah. it, was, it was not about that. Talk about some of the rules and how you came up with them and, and what the walk away. Don't give away all 12 rules. You must buy the book network to get all 12 rules. He'll out, <laughs> Rob will outline a couple here. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it, I narrowed it down to 12, but, you know, to me, the key thing is, every time you work out, and I just talked about this on a, on a podcast earlier, you, know, you, you got to really be efficient. You know, you don't need to be in the gym seven hours a day. I love guys out there. And, oh, I have a gym right now. I was in the gym six hours. You can't be working that hard if you're in the gym six <laughs> hours. You know, I work these guys so hard, and Kevin Durant, those guys, every single rep, they don't take off. So every single rep, ask yourself, would that work in a game? Right. If not, you just wasted a rep. Right. So my workouts are seriously 50 minutes to an hour max, gone. And this yep. guy's, these guys are exhausted. So I try to simulate a game the best that I do. And for the young kids with the shooting, the main thing now is, especially when they're watching Steph Curry and these guys, start inside. Start 10 feet out. Don't try your threes. You know, yeah. I see kids now, you know, we growing up, want to, we want to dunk, right? right? Now kids growing up, they want I to shoot threes. I, I did not have well, that yeah, issue. Well, yeah, unless you're a Nerf hoop. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so, you know, but now kids want to shoot threes, so it's crazy. You know, when I was growing up, I wanted to grab the net and the rim, and now kids come in the gym, and they're hooking up threes from their waist because they're not strong enough, and that right. creates bad habits. So th those are the, the main things right now that kids should be definitely be working on. Um, there's a couple factual errors in the book. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. One of them is uh, the best arena. Uh, that mm -hmm. would be the old Boston Garden. I don't know if you got the memo. <laughs> this idea of these new, get that memo. new fangled arenas. I think what you have the, uh, the yeah Warriors yeah. Uh, oh, new, yeah. new location. Yeah. Uh, it's gone now, but uh, that that's factually incorrect. Okay. Just yeah, because sure. the place serves sushi, uh, I need, I does, need, I need does to call that, my publisher. <laughs> yeah, that should be in the second edition. That needs to be cleaned <laughs> up. Um, you you work with Curry and Durant. Who's better? <laughs> oh, wow. Time to end this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Let's see. They both have their strengths. They do. <laughs> they do. Next question. <laughs> What's been the biggest surprise of this journey? Uh, what is it that, you know, you've just been, you know, besides the, you know, pinch yourself from time yeah, to time and, and enjoy every minute of it, but what's been the biggest surprise? Um... I would say how just real these guys are. Yeah. And I say it a lot. And we just talked about it with Kevin. I mean, these are just normal guys. Yeah. I mean, they have a lot of money and they, and they have a lot of perks and, and they play in the NBA. But these, these are normal human beings who actually, they want to talk to people and they want to be around and live a normal life. Sometimes they just can't, you know. Right. Um, you know, Kevin Lowe is my son's godfather. You know, the, the relationship with these guys goes much deeper than the client. I don't call these guys clients. So, right. Derek Rose, Steph, two most humble people you ever meet in your life. Yeah. I mean, Steph is just the realest, realest guy. Um, so that's that's a little surprising because, you know, I think people look at NBA players and they think they might be jerks or live this different life. But no, they're, they're, normal, they're normal human beings that, that just, uh, you know, really want to relate to the people. What's, what's been the div biggest disappointment? What's the complexity of the business that is the most difficult to deal with? Um, I mean, I won't say this, anything's difficult. I think the, the toughest thing for me is, you know, the travel is a tough yeah. for me. I mean, I'm on the road 200 nights a year. Yeah. Um, it, it's a lot, and it's trying to combine that with making everyone happy. Uh, you know, and a good problem that I've had in the past is having guys on separate teams in the finals, right? So you have right. Kevin Love versus Steph, and then eventually KD every year. You know, at the end of the, after the finals, you know, which locker am I going in? The winners or losers here, you know? So that, that's been a weird thing for me a little bit. They don't make a big deal about it, Yeah. Uh, thankfully. But, yeah, for me, it's like uh, it's, I'm torn, you know? Um, 
uh, as, you, as folks approach you, and mm -hmm. listen, everybody who's 15 years old is not going to play in the NBA. They right. may not make varsity. They're not going to play in college. What's the, but they love sports. What's the lesson that you provide to them uh, and input you give to them about staying in sports and staying involved and finding a niche? Yeah, first of all, I think every kid should play all sports. Yeah. Uh, if you talk to the best athletes in the world now, they played everything growing up. They didn't really pick anything really until maybe senior year in high school right. or college. Uh, so you got to do that because there's much you can get from all of that. Um, you know, but to me, being a good teammate is the biggest thing here. Um, you know, with social media now, everyone's about me, 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 me. Right. Um, but if you look at the, pe the teams that won championships, you know, UConn women's basketball, right. San Antonio Spurs, Golden State, it's, it's you know, they all use the same word, culture. You yeah. know, and building that culture. And if you have 20 points one night and you win, and the next point you have zero points, we win, doesn't matter, you know. Right. Uh, but social media has changed a lot. And, and, and I think people want quick highlights and things like that rather than, you know, winning games. But people don't realize the more you win, the more money you make, the more endorsements you get. You know, and, and the more, you know, more uh, publicity you're going to get. Well, I think there was an important component in the book where you talk about guys like uh, West turning mm -hmm. down higher amounts of money because he wanted to play and win a championship. Mm -hmm. You know, he went to uh, Golden State yeah. for, you know, in the NBA pennies, yeah, yeah, 1.5 yeah. million, yeah, yeah. and turned down significantly mm -hmm. more. And it is that desire. Once you've hit that level and you've gotten a couple contracts, you're set for life financially, your family's set for life. It is that achievement of really, you know, being in the history book of winning a championship. Yeah, I mean, guys chase that ring, especially at the end of their career. Right. Um, and that's what it's all about, winning that championship. That's, that's your lifelong dream, you know. Um, and it's, you know, KD thought he had the best chance of going to Golden State win a championship, and he got two. You yeah. know, now he can kind of settle in in Brooklyn and figure it out. But... Yeah, I mean, there's nothing like, you know, talking to Kevin Love and just being with him after he won the title a few years ago. I've never seen him so, you know, so in, in a sense deflated emotionally, if that makes sense, because he, he just couldn't believe he's had this trophy in his hand. He's a world champion. You right. know, it's a big accomplishment, you know, for sure of his life. That's great. Uh, what What's the rest of the book tour look like? And uh, it's almost season time, right? It is like almost season, clock, yeah. The clock is on the field. I'll be here some training camps, you know, probably next week. Uh, but for all these Rhode Islanders and Englanders, we're doing a, a big book signing in Garden City uh, right. this Saturday, October 5th at 2 to 3.30. Uh, we're doing a Q&A with uh, Joe Kayada, and, uh, and it'll be a, book, a big book signing, Barrington Books. So right. hopefully we can have some people there. Great. We'll push that, and we'll tie it into the article. Yeah. Rob, thanks so much. Thanks so much Congratulations on everything. Thanks a lot. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Kate Nagel will be back at 4 o'clock with uh, folks from Brown University's Warren Albert Medical School. Uh, lots going on this week. Tomorrow, big hearing over in the State House on the uh, Twin River IGT. Uh, so stay tuned. Tune back in at 4 o'clock, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much.